Welcome to my YouTube channel, One Race, a Human Race, All Human. Today is Wednesday, and May 4th, 2022. In state after state, we are seeing... Democrats must, must, must bring people together. Remind the people that everyone has a right to life, liberty, and happiness. Remind people that it doesn't matter what skin color you happen to have, right? We're all in the same boat together. Let's let all boats rise together. It's so important to say that and to deal with deal with um, the the um, negativity of the Republican Party with positivity. Bring people together. Bring people together. Trump back Republicans win their party's nomination running on a platform of conspiracy theories about how the 2020 election was stolen. But while election conspiracy candidates are winning Republican primaries where they run against each other, they're having less luck when facing off against Democrats, even in an election cycle that's supposed to favor Republicans. Last night, Michigan held a special, ele a special election for a vacant House seat. Trump had won the district by double digits in 2020. He'd been represented by Republicans for more than three decades. So the conventional wisdom was that this was going to be an easy Republican victory. The Republican in that race was a conservative QAnon conspiracy theorist. He claimed that Ukraine was, quote, culpable for its invasion by Russia. He ran on a platform of trying to decertify the 2020 election and at one point, he decided to use a very unfortunate metaphor for that fight. You know, having three daughters, and I tell my daughters, well, if rape is inevitable, you should just lie back and enjoy it. See the shocked look on the face of the woman next to him? Well, that woman is a fellow Republican. The Democrat running against the fringe QAnon rape joke guy decided that she was going to make that candidate's extremism and conspiracy theories a focus of her campaign. And it worked. The Democrat, Carol Glanville, won the special election for that state house seat deep in the heart of Trump country. After her victory, she told the Washington Post, quote, Democrats need to tell their story. The big takeaway from all this is that people are tired of radicalism and conspiracy theories. Joining us now is Carol Glanville, the Democratic Michigan state representative elect who won that special election. Ms. Glanville, thank you for joining us. Congratulations on your victory. I, I want to ask you, I want to start by asking you, you, do you think your race was a special case because of the odious things that your opponents said and the, the weird stances he had? Or is it a model that can be replicated by other Democrats who can really call extremist candidates out on, on the beliefs that they have? I'd say um, probably both of those things. I mean, what I found going door to door and running my campaign here in West Michigan is that, you know, people people really were able to come around voting for values and um, shared shared those shared values and um, working to solve problems in our community. They are interested in the things that affect them on a day-to-day -day basis, um, like great public schools, strong public schools, clean water, um, good jobs for working families, comprehensive health care. You know, they're not interested in this fear mongering and the hatred and vitriol and the radicalism. They're tired of it. And I think that was demonstrated in my election last night. And that's, I mean, for me to win that seat, clearly there had to be bipartisan support for my uh, candidacy. Yeah, clearly. The, the, so the, that, that message resonates with folks. The, the numbers uh, indicate that. There was no way to, to win that just with Democratic votes. So what do you say to people who say that Democrats in this election cycle need to focus solely on pocketbook issues, the, the economy, inflation, these kinds of things, and not get distracted by election conspiracies and extremist antics? Yeah, I would say um, we just need to stand up for what we know is the right thing, right? Those, like I said, it's common sense and decency and those those solid fundamental values that at the end of the day, you know, that's what everybody wants and that's what everybody's looking for. And so I think you, you're, you're right. Like we don't, we shouldn't get distracted by these things, but we shouldn't ignore them either. It's time for us to call it out, right? Um, I feel like sometimes the, the Democratic Party is a little bit too Midwest nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and for those of you who aren't from the Midwest, that might might not resonate with you as much. But, um, you, you know, we tend to be we tend to be very nice as Democrats. And I think it's time for us to really just, you know, say enough is enough. 
um, and start calling these things out and then start talking about what folks really want to hear about. I, I'm from Canada, so I get the Midwest nice thing. Um, there are there are two election deniers who are running for statewide office in Michigan. One of them is running for the position that would actually oversee the elections in the entire state. Um, how did that resonate? When you were talking to people as you were campaigning, do people care about that stuff, the actual election integrity issue that has become so central to, to Michigan politics? I think election integrity is um, it's, it's it's another one of the kind of misconceptions that the Republican Party is trying to throw out there. They they wrap their message in what sounds like something that people would be interested in when in fact it is anti uh, democratic, right? Um, everything they talk about is anti education, anti democratic, um, anti health care, anti everything. But they they wrap it in this um, kind of a conundrum, right? The message is a little bit confusing for folks. So when you hear election integrity, it sounds like something, yeah, we should all, we should all get around that. But when you understand that what they mean by election integrity is, you know, stripping voting rights from people, closing polling stations, um, disallowing absentee voting, things like that, then that's not election integrity. Um, that's just a way to suppress the vote. And um, that's, that's how they think they can win. Um, they, they can't win with the votes. So they try to limit the number of people who can vote. Carol Glanville, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, Carol Glanville is the Democratic Michigan State Representative elect. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Coming up next, the January 6th investigation interviewed. Stand up, bring people together, talk about issues of jobs, health care, right? Uh, student lo loans. Um, talk about how we are all one people and everyone has a right to life, liberty, and happiness. Everyone everywhere.